to another exciting episode of Eye on a Cry Bomb. An educated citizenry is perhaps one of the key backbones towards a thriving economy. And this may be why Governor Akpabio has chosen to focus on it in his Uncommon Transformation Agenda for the state. I'm Keisha Guitari. Join me as I take you on this journey through a Cry Bomb state's education sector, looking at everything from infrastructure development to the child rights law and all that falls in between. Stay tuned for another episode of Eye on a Cry Bomb. Education in Nigeria is taking centre focus. In the proposed 2013 federal budget, the sector had the largest allocation with 426 billion naira. Several states are following in the federal government's footsteps, shining a light on the sector. In a quiet bomb, the administration of Governor Pabio is currently supervising a complete overhaul of academic institutions. The aim is to inspire and preserve what was a fast-fading intellectual culture. The state is getting this done through various initiatives, including the rehabilitation of the physical infrastructure of various institutions, the establishment of an exam ethics and monitoring committee, and the implementation of a 27.5% increase in teachers' salaries, among several other steps. In the past five years, over 4,100 Aquibom schools have been renovated and the state government has built over 1,500 new classrooms, as well as investing over 500 million naira in books and computers. The incentive for parents to enrol their children in primary and secondary schools grew when the state government instituted free education at these levels. From September 2008 to January 2012, the number of primary school pupils rose by 22% from 761,422 to 931,337, while secondary school enrollment tripled within the same period. We decided that we must stop the drift of our young people to urban cities, you know, going there to serve as house boys and house girls. So we declared free and compulsory education. And then we did not just do so, we codified it. We signed the Child Rights Protection Law and enshrine a provision that makes basic education compulsory for the acquired child. And then also we prescribe punishment, including possible imprisonment for any parent or guardian that allows a child of school age not to be in school. And so that is a law, that basic education is your right, and it is legal, and it is codified. And so today we have triple school enrollment. But also I recognize the fact that acquired is not an island unto itself. We are one out of 36 states of the Federation. And therefore, to educate your child in Akwaibum with the children of other uh, indigents of other states resident in your state, not having education will not be the best. So we open that policy up to all Nigerian children who are residents in Akwaibum state. And that way, we are able to educate our neighbors. Our neighboring states are able to send their children here to also enjoy the free and compulsory education. And that's why today, we are talking in hundreds of thousands of children, both in the primary school and in the secondary school. When we came on board, like we have rightly said, His Excellency said to us with the responsibility of ensuring that the free education succeeds. We divided our job in basic areas. The first was the free education per se, which involved ensuring that there's no fees charged in our schools. You could imagine that before this time, we were not only charging the normal school fees of 300 naira per term. We had 18 different items called, in quote, other charges, which ranges from timetable card fee, fee clearance fee, so many extortion in name of fees. And I, as you know this country, our people, the teachers, the principals, they were used to getting this money. So that was the first initial problem, ensuring that we stop it. Now, quality was the second problem. And the second the, that problem has to do with getting the teachers to be committed to their job. We've seen quite a lot of uh, developmental changes. Uh, we had the uh, 635 and the 55 or whatever, and then now we are running the one that we have the six years in the primary school, uh, three years in the junior secondary school, three years in the senior secondary school, and then we have four years in the university. And uh, with what we have 
been having all through. I think um, we are moving forward. The development is uh, really dynamic. And um, in terms of facilities, in terms of equipment, in terms of the features, and in terms of human development. Uh, so we welcome all of them. In terms of the physical, we've seen a lot of um, changes as far as the, the school blocks are concerned. Uh, in Aquaibum in particular, the school blocks are all wearing new looks, except very few, uh, that w very soon they'll also be touched. <laughs>
uh, that they are supposed to operate uh, as tertiary institutions that should be specialized. There ought to be a lot of equipment and uh, libraries and uh, ICT services. And um, these have been brought on visibly, tangibly, and very satisfactorily because uh, we are, in terms of uh, the second year of study in a university or year two work, we are ranked among the best in the engineering faculties in this country at the year two level. But as we grow on and we are preparing very substantially uh, for year three, then year four, five, then a full undergraduate program is uh, put in place. So it has been a lot of uh, facilities and a lot of infrastructure that we have uh, received. And as you can see, the school is well developing. Then the, the, we are doing the innovation of the houses here. So though we don't have uh, enough space to, for lectures, sometimes we may stay in a very one and room like that, which is not we, are not, we don't feel comfortable at all. They, we are, they are pleading with us that we should bear it. Then in a few months that we would have enough space. The uh, turnaround uh, of infra the infrastructure in the educational system in Okwaibom State has been revolutionary. And like I said earlier, over 2,500 school blocks have been rehabilitated and new ones constructed with new facilities toilets facilities, water system facilities, and um, the urban schools that are close to the roads are fenced around to ensure the safety of children within the school environment and so on. So it's been phenomenal. The infrastructure uh, development in the educational system has been great. A provisional, uh, the government has provided a lot of uh, facilities, books, laboratory equipment, reagents for practicals and, and all of that. All of those have come in to, to help the educational system. So in terms of infrastructural development in the educational system, it's been huge and revolutionary, I must say. The cost of implementing the state's education policy is approximately 7 billion naira per annum. However, while several Aquibamites appreciate and acknowledge the efforts of the state government in developing the education sector, there are still challenges that they feel need to be addressed. In the past, I, I noted that most of the teachers, not even most, almost all the teachers did not receive their salary in time. But now, they can boast of salary at time. They also improve themselves because our Excellency has done so much work by implementing um, um, a kind of a conference for teachers in order to be educated, more educated. So this conference and seminar has helped teachers. The challenges that we have as a teacher, I see that if the government can bring more facilities, establish schools where there is no school, bring uh, enough, um, enough textbooks, building of a library, and so on. I think that will help in teaching field. If they can bring more department, even my department, we don't have HND, but if they can invite such department to read, I, we will be well appreciated. The science lab tech, the civil engineering, no HND, we will appreciate it more if we do have it. Join us after the break where we visit West Africa's first and largest e-library located in none other than Aquibom State. Stay tuned for more Iron Aquibom.